So good afternoon. It's a very big pleasure to be here in this session and talk to you about automated screening. I have a, a relationship with Oculus for a long time, which I'm very honored and happy to have. This is part of a big study group. I have to acknowledge my friend Bernardo Lopez, who is a PhD fellow at UNIFESP, and all my group in Rio de Janeiro and also with Jean Marcelo at Brain in Alagoas with intelligence, artificial intelligence is critical for analysis this. So this is uh, what we're trying to do for a long time. We have to combine tomography and biomechanics. And if you see these two corneas, this is a very thick normal cornea, and that was a keratoconic cornea. But when we combine tomography and biomechanics, we really go beyond what we have to do for screening. However, we have to understand what, what's the problem, what we're trying to screen for, and today, de developing a way to detect algorithms for ectasia risk is different to detect ectasia as a disease. And the role of the combination of topography and tomography and biomechanics is critical. We have the problem. Ectasia was described in a LASIK case that had form fruits disease prior to surgery. It's one of the major complications after LASIK, and we have to understand how to prevent careful screening has always been critical. We have to exclude patients at risk with early keratoconus. And also we have to understand how you can make the cornea weaker but still stable. So if you go beyond certain limit that will vary from patient to patient, you may have ectasia. So ectasia susceptibility is fundamental. And each cornea would have a residual stromal bed and a percentage of tissue that you can alter and be still stable. So ectasia that you're trying to screen is not this type of disease, advanced disease that you can get from the slit lamp. You need to get like in the glaucoma. is a continuum from normality to blindness that in ectasia you have from stability to the disease and you have to assess susceptibility. Susceptibility will be detected by topography. And you see a lot of people are still using the surrogate as biomechanical measurements to be topography. is a very limited and literally superficial surrogate. Topography can give you abnormal values in patients with 20-20 best correct vision. However, variability is very important to be considered when you classify topographers. Even fellowship trained or very well knowledge uh, people that do topography can be changed from one topography scale to the other and the agreement is less than half amongst experts. But even though, if you look at the fellow eye of that patient with 2015, those are the asymmetric cases of ectasia. Form fruits ectasia was described by Professor Emsler 50 years before topography was invented. This is coined as the fellow eye with asymmetric, not exactly unilateral keratoconus by Kleiss. So those eyes are the ones that we are studying. We want to detect disease risk before disease occurs. So tomography is important. And I put together this editorial with Dr. Bellin that we have to acknowledge the difference between tomography and topography. This is a case that had progressive inferior stiffening after PRK. And if you look at tomography data, you understand that this is not ectasia because of the thickening. The combination of thickness profile and elevation with a Bell and Ambrosio enhanced ectasia display gives you an objective D. This D is very important to detect disease in cases like that. Some of these cases are truly unilateral cases of ectasia, but we need to get the sensitivity in some of these cases. However, if you just go for the Ds, you have about 80% of sensitivity for those fellow eyes. The integration of shine fluke tomography and biomechanics is definitely what we think is the future and actually the current present for the ultimate screening. So I'm very glad and honored to have done this study with Vinci Guerra family. And the TBI is the combination of Pentacam and Corvus. So we have cases with normal corneas, tomographically, topographically, and stable corneas on clinical setting. We have 181 patients with clinical keratoconus. We have one eye selected per patient. And we have 117 eyes with very asymmetric ectasia. From those eyes, we have, from those patients, we have 96 patients with no surgery in the more advanced eye. So we got this group as well. So we combine 
and we look at the parameters. Just an overview of this population. If you see the D, it's very good for frank ectasia. If you have the normals versus the keratoconus and the ectatic eyes, the sensitivity and specificity is very good. The cutoff value is about 1.95, and this is good. But if you look at the topographically normal eye, you have 81.2% sensitivity. And you have to go down with the cutoff value for 1.07, which sacrifices specificity. This is the best cutoff, in my opinion, around 1.4, which is still white on the Bell and Ambrosio display. But it will give you a very bad sensitivity. So you have to go beyond topography and tomography to detect those cases. So we have to understand artificial intelligence. We have done linear regression analysis, and we also have done a very nice and sophisticated method for artificial intelligence called random forest. So it gives you many different decision trees so you get to a final decision. We have a lot of data to analyze, and our brain has limited capacity to get all this data. So we learn, and we can make the machine to learn more. If you think about artificial intelligence, that's how we do. We have natural intelligence, and we have to transmit this type of acknowledgement for the computer so that they can be trained and help us to make our clinical decisions. So this is the dot plots of the TBI, which is a combination of tomographic data, much beyond the bad D, and biomechanical measurements that we just seen the description from Cynthia and Paolo and Ricardo. So the normals and ectasia cases are very much separated. This separation gives you 100% sensitivity and specificity to detect disease. Actually, a few of those cases are outliers because those are the ectasia eyes from patients that may have truly unilateral ectasia, and those cases will behave somehow different than the ectatic with the disease. This is the form fruits cases, the normal topography eyes, and those cases you have 90% sensitivity with still a very good specificity. So it's important that you say yeses in patients that may have yeses, and you say noes when the patient have the risk. So here you have less than 5% of false positives. So it gives you a huge enhancement, not only on the sensitivity, because it comes from 70 to 80% to 90%, but here you have a huge improve in specificity. And this is very important because you have a busy refractive clinic and you want to do surgery. If you just want to be safe, you say no to any patient. You don't have ectasia. So you want to be safe. And this is probably one of the main benefits on the enhancement of specificity so you can treat patients that can benefit. So if you look at the TBI versus the CBI and the bad D, for the form fruits cases, you see a huge improvement. The bad D and the CBI, they are complementary, but the D is a little better than the CBI. However, when we look at the comparison from the combination and the individual, it's a huge difference that you get for those cases with mild ectasia. This is one of the examples. Very normal right eye, abnormal left eye. And this is one of the best examples because all these topometric indices are still white here. And you see the dot on the, on the, the, the curves, the corner deforms more, and you have a very abnormal CBI. And despite of the D of 0 0.74, you have a very susceptible cornea. This is the fellow eye, and you see from the shine flu camera that it's easy to see the early uh, change, even on the first measurement that you just have the thickness profile. And this is a very abnormal cornea. So automate screening means that you have combination of shine flu tomography and biomechanics. We need to go with statistical intelligence ways to understand the complexity of the data and to have this analysis so that you have final numbers. And the TBI is the way that we look at ectasia susceptibility for the diagnosis. So this type of combination will give you the ultimate screening for ectasia susceptibility. And today, that may be even further developed for improving the accuracy of the surgery, depending on some of the parameters from biomechanics, to adjust the laser and the treatment parameters so that we can have better outcomes. Thank you. We have about two to three minutes for questions. 
Do we have any questions from the audience? Go to the microphone. Very briefly, do, do you already have uh, a software package that combines for clinicians the data from their biomechanical scanner and the Pentacam? Oculus have that, do they? Yeah. Great, tremendous. So the Oculus actually compiled the results of all the scientific studies you saw and, and have modified the software they're introducing at this meeting. Thank you very much. Any other questions? We do have another presentation on um, the, um, the new uh, Pentacam.